slower. I guess he didn't like my energy. Howdy, y'all. Favorite chair in the middle buckle. He didn't know what that was, but. But I feel like that's not a super important part of life. Ah, people, they just love to criticize you online, right? So today we're going to get into a program for one of our trainers, Chelsea. And uh, one of the things that I did today, I'm always thinking of ways to better our trainers. So I reached out and who needed some help? And she said she wanted some help with the programming. You guys are going to come across it very common as a trainer that it gets kind of boring designing your own programs. It's nice having other people do that. So I wanted to help my trainers. And so she told me what she's doing with her goals, and then I'm gonna show you what this looks like, and then Chelsea, you can start doing it and give us your feedback. So Chelsea's been training for a while. This is not a beginner's program. We always wanna take a look at the acute variables when it comes to programming. How many times, so you do this via par Q. You ask how many times a week are you training? If it's a beginner, it's really easy. You're just gonna do three full body workouts, strengthen ligaments and tendons, focus on movement competency, if they have favorite exercises, put the favorite exercises into the program. It's really just building that relationship that's uh, the more challenging part as a, as a trainer with a new client. But with Chelsea, she is currently getting between 1350 to 1450 calories and she uses Lane Norton's Carbon Coach app. You use that as well, right? And uh, just people have really enjoyed that and you enjoy that as well, right? It's like how much per month? 10 bucks a month. So uh, if you haven't used that, give it a shot. I'll tag Wayne on here. So she's currently doing three exercise, sorry, three sets per nine exercises, two to three times per week. Uh, she has at home 20, 25, 30, 35, and just got a 50 pound dumbbell. She's been getting between seven to 10,000 steps. So her need is right around there. And then she also has a pull up bar. And so the program that I designed for is for someone who's been training at least for, I would classify her as moderate to advanced. If, if I had like a, a class pass person come in, they've been training yoga and Pilates and doing a lot of cardio, this would not be appropriate. I would consider this pretty moderate to advanced. So day one, we're going to do jumps, three by 10 into a superset into a hip thrust. So she'll do her warm up. I don't put warm ups on there. You just need to do your own warm up that you like. Maybe some internal, external. I really like doing these sagittal plane, frontal plane. I like getting down into a deep squat, adducting, relaxing, getting over my ankles, do some thoracic rotations, three minutes or so. Get into the workout. You do a set of 10 jumps, then she's gonna go right into hip thrust. But we're gonna work on velocity. So we have the size principle where we look at type one and type two. Velocity, think of a baseball. It's fast, the weight is light though. So the force velocity curve is going to have light weight fast because she doesn't have that much. So I want her to get the bar, I think she says like 90 or 100 pounds. Don't just crank out reps because she'd need to go to 100. Focus on the explosive. It's like you sit there for two seconds, and then pretend like a, a needle just poked you in the ass and you gotta get up there fast. Maximal velocity, 10 reps, then we're gonna rest. Two, three minutes, jumps again, fast, jumps again, fast. That's her first circuit, then she's gonna go into the next one. So what's the main pattern I'm doing here with the hip thrust? Hinge pattern, jump is gonna be transitional. Then we're gonna go to another hip thrust, we're gonna stay with that. It's always funny, I, I find, that when people in the gym, they do an exercise, that you can never do it again, right? If your favorite exercise is a bench press, why not do 10 sets of bench press? There's no written rule you're gonna get in trouble for doing it. I do it all the time. I'll do a strength set for three, strength round for three sets, hypertrophy round for three sets, endurance round for three sets. I'll hit nine, 10, sometimes 12 sets of bench press. So we're gonna do more hip thrust. Throw the band on her knees, and she's gonna do three sets of 25. She'll hit her first set of 25, then I want her to do a pull-up similar to the hip thrust, but with speed. Now she's getting up there and she's doing really well with about three, four, maybe on a good day, five pull-ups. I want her to work on the velocity. So you hang, hold, just one time, get up there as fast as you can. And then that's it for that one. And then ab work. And I put that one pretty blanket because she's really creative with her ab exercises. So how can you, if you were training someone, put a flashy little ab exercise in there, something maybe they haven't done before, some little flutters, put the band on their, their ankles. That's where the creativity comes in. If this was an online client, I would put this as flashy ab exercise, DM me. 
So then they DM me, and then I'm at the gym right now, I'm gonna go over there, and I'm gonna do some ab exercise, I'm gonna tag her, have her do it, that's how you can get your clients engaged online. Three rounds of that, and then we're gonna do goblet squat. So again, hip, th hip thrust will be a hinge pattern, and then now we're getting a pull. So we got two hinge, one pull, now we're gonna do a goblet, more knee dominant, which would be more quads. Three by 30, so that most people, even girls, you don't see a lot of girls getting above 15, 20 reps. So I really wanna push her and try to get to 30. Bridge press, so here, grab those 20 pound weights, eat, put the band on there. Maybe she does one arm. We're gonna do, uh, I wanted to do three by 20 into a push up with the band on the ankles and work on abduction. So right when she's done with that bridge press, she's gonna come into a push up position, the band will be on her ankles and she has to hold and go back and forth 20. 20 on that side. It's a great core, and maybe it's, a, it's like one of the rubber ones. She can even do like a spider one when she comes up there, working her, her hip flexors as well. That will be day one. Day two, jumps again, but we're gonna go to single leg. So, sticking it as high as you can, stick it, and film yourself to make sure you don't have too much valgus. Into a pull up, plus three centric. So whatever her AMRAP is, Chelsea, whatever it is, if you're hitting four, jump up there, eccentric, come down for three more. I'd also challenge you to grab some weight, put it on there as well. So maybe she has a 10 pound weight, she gets her four, and then she jumps up there, grabs it with her feet, and has a heavy eccentric come down on that one. Three rounds, again. Reverse lunges, three by 12. She has 30 to 35s, and she's expressed in the past that the limiting factor is the grip strength. So I'm, I'm guessing that 12 will probably be pretty good. Explosive push-ups. So you come down, a couple ways you can do this. Take your hands off the ground, pause for a second, and then come up as a unit. So. So taking that out is, is eliminating momentum five of those and then more ab work. Get creative with your ab work. For your own programming, I encourage you to leave it blank, kind of like that, just abs, and walk around and come up with stuff that you can do. If you have a partner, one of my favorite ones to do, push a position, grab your partner's legs, wheelbarrow, and drop them without them knowing. So then they have to stabilize their core. It's fun, right? We like to have fun when we do ab exercises. Three rounds, last round what we're gonna do, single leg hip thrust, three by 40. It's a nice little number, right? We stick to 20, 25. I want to get out of that comfort zone, get up to the 40 repetitions. But we're going to do a little circuit here with some curls into band presses. Get the band on your hands. Just do like 20, 30 of those. Do it for 30 seconds and one minute of jump rope. Each time, make it a little more challenging. If you don't have a jump rope, do jumping jacks. You can put the band on your ankles for the jumping jacks or the knees. We're really going to fire up your glutes. That would be the end of this non-consecutive day. This would be like on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's how I designed it. I don't want it to be back to back to back because she's only working out three days. Last day, jumps three by six into wall eccentrics. So let me show off real quick. You get your wall, you just work on getting up there and then come down eccentrically and do a few of those. She's very uh, strong. She can definitely get those. If you wanted to regress, you could do some pike variations. So you regress here to here. Work your way up to a bench. I want to see more wall push-ups. I think that guys and girls could both improve dramatically from doing those. That was the eccentric. Try to get to a concentric. If you have bad shoulders, if this was for a beginner, do you think I would give that to Chelsea? Not at all, she's a tough girl, she can handle that. Start getting out of your comfort zone. We're gonna do some more jumps. Notice how we're only going six here, so we do three by six in the wall eccentrics, resting maybe 90 seconds to two minutes. Again, three by six on the jumps, and a three by 10 for the goblets. She has the 50s, so she can do 10, maybe even two of the 30s to get more load. Maybe the 35s, I want you to hit 10 on the goblets. Three rounds of that. Pull-ups and abductions. So she can do her pull-ups, but then I want to keep a band on her leg while she's doing the pull-ups. So she gets her four, then she holds, and then she works on abductions in that holding position. Maybe try to, the goal is to be on the bar for a whole minute. 
You get your four, then you get your abductions. Maybe you get one and you do five abductions. Get creative with it. And then at the end, we have push-ups. I'm going to challenge you to try a, a single arm eccentric. Because again, she can do 20 plus push-ups. You just get into that push-up position. Go nice and wide in your feet. You try to get your single arm under your, your pec and just come back really, really, really slow. And then come up. Worst case scenario on eccentrics, just teach people how to fall. If you're uncertain, just go to your knees. You're fine. You're not going to hurt you. Eccentrics are really safe to do. It's a lot of challenge. If you're a beginner, don't try those. I'll get granny to try one arm push up. It's not going to end well. Paper plates. So I believe I've seen in, in her post, she has like a, a slippery, I don't want to call that, slippery floor. Get some paper plates, put it on your feet, and then you can do some abductions. And that uh, texture or whatever is going to help with it. I mean, you can even do it on a rug. It's hard to do in here. If you have valve slides on like the grass, that works. And then banded jumping jacks. So Scott and some people were asking some questions about programming. How did I know what to design for? I didn't just make this. I asked a lot of questions. What are you currently doing? How's our body holding up? What are your goals? She's in a deficit and she needs to lose four more pounds. That's why she's doing this little weight loss challenge. And so notice how I'm not doing real heavy. I think explosive is fine because it's not as taxing on the system. Even if I had access to a gym, I wouldn't have her get down to the three, four, five, six rep range. It's just not optimal. You can, but she told me specifically her goal is the weight loss aspect. So notice the reps I'm keeping high. Now Max, on the other hand, we've been going through some of his programming. He wants to get down to David's body fat percentage, which is 2.3%, but he, he also wants to maintain the strength, which you can do. You can definitely do that. So like yesterday, we took his five rep max and we did 10 total reps at one to two reps. So he would hit his one or two. So he wasn't going to fatigue. He was it's still heavy shit. I mean, he can normally only do it five times. So he's going a little faster for two than he rested. And he got five rounds of that. Different goals. So you take, you got to get that information. Physical activity readiness questionnaire. You do that part Q. You learn from your client. And then you design something appropriate with what their goals are. Whatever their total volume is, just up at 10, 20%. That's usually a pretty good guesstimation. Look at fit, frequency, intensity, time, time. David comes in, I size him up, he's in great shape. I'm not just gonna take him through a workout. What have you currently been doing? And you can just tell by his vocabulary. If he tells me I've been doing some um, EMOMs and some hit stuff, you know, it's EMOM every minute on the minute. It's like you use that vocabulary, it's a little more advanced. If he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I was, he was doing this, like some of these and like those. Like, oh, shit, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so you're just going to use from the experience in that conversation. Have you been sore? I always ask that. Do you get sore a lot? If you've been training for a long time and you don't get sore, I'm gonna, probably going to up the intensity a little bit, maybe focus more on the eccentrics. Next time you do a bench press, let's do some super slow chest flies on the back end. We can get creative. I like soreness, but for beginners, I make sure to communicate with them. It's not the end of the world if we don't get sore. Remember what soreness is, it's two things. Not lactic acid, it's... Good, good, so the, the breakdown of ATP, you're gonna have a byproduct of hydrogen ions, which are chemical damage. We have chemical damage and mechanical damage. So when I do a super slow bicep curl on the way down, eccentrically, you create a lot of damage. And then the breakdown of ATP, the next day or two, that chemical accumulation. It's not lactic acid. Questions about programming? I'll take a photo of this and send it to you, Chelsea. We can probably end that now. Thank you.